embarrassment, being embarrassed. Everyone feels embarrassed some of the time. Some people feel embarrassed most of the time. And some people have kind of a hierarchy. I'm embarrassed around these people, but I'm not embarrassed around these other people. So I'm David Hoffman, independent filmmaker, 80 years old, not embarrassed. I do a lot of embarrassing things on my YouTube channel. I make mistakes. I misspell, call somebody the wrong name, all kinds of things. And I look ridiculous sometimes. And I like it. I'm not only not embarrassed, I'm not, I don't even think about embarrassment as a bad thing. Because in my lifetime experience, being embarrassed gave me such freedom. I learned so much about myself and about the other people because I was embarrassed because I experienced that feeling and no longer have it now. So my subscribers say to me a couple of months ago, David, how do you do this? How do you not be embarrassed? I'd like to not be embarrassed. I'm a young person. David Hoffman is about to give you his tips. First, there's a ton of advice out there. There are a ton of videos on embarrassment, but they're kind of scientific or medical. I'm just going to tell you my experiences. Hopefully they will resonate with you. You can imagine me. And maybe you can see yourself in these situations and maybe they'll help you be less embarrassed. Why do you want to be not embarrassed? Because the truth is, by being myself, by making my mistakes, like I just did, by spilling coffee, which I'm going to tell you about, and worse, some of my mistakes, um, you are real. You become more real. And you can look at the other person and you can see how they see you. Are they superior? I don't make mistakes. He's less than me. Do they sympathize, empathize, even like you for making the mistake? So that's what this is about. So I'm 13 years old and my mother is having a real problem with David because David never finds the right shirts. Girls like blue, girls like pink. I'm trying to figure girls out. They're completely alien to me. She was a great mom, but she never told me about women. I didn't understand them at all. Frightened. Colors, colors, what should I do? Should I do my hair this way? Should I do my... What will the girls like? Ignoring, of course, any kind of embarrassment. Didn't want embarrassment. But I am a very talented musician at 16 and at 17. And orchestras in the area hire me to play as the first oboist. So in the first really embarrassing moment, I'm 16 years old, a thousand people in the audience, a famous conductor, an oboe solo about to happen, and I'm standing up. He points to the soloist. I stand up like I'm not going to do right now because my pants are dirty. would embarrass me. And my fly is open. And I look down, and people are laughing. I can see it. <laughs> Guy points, people are laughing. I look down. My fly is open, and my tie, which was much too long, and in my pants went out the fly. I pull my pants up. What is this moment? A disaster, a run off the stage, a cry, I get red. That's like fake to me. I'm gonna be real. So I stand up like that and I go like this to the audience, like it was intentional, and then I play the solo. My first moment of really confronting, am I gonna look like a schmuck by being embarrassed or am I gonna do something with this, do something? A year later, it's a very famous conductor. I'm now 17 years old going to get a scholarship to college on the oboe and um, playing a very famous piece he wrote with a solo and it came after the break, the orchestral break. Points to me again, different guy. I go, nothing. He goes, and then I blow with all my might. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, only worse. And you go, <laughs> everybody laughs. He's pissed. I had a pie at lunch, a cherry pie with a little soda, and a piece of the pie got stuck in my mouth, and it blew into the little teeny oboe reed. I'm done for. Well, I was done for with that guy. If people ask me after, how did I feel? I felt ridiculous. I felt like silly, but I wasn't embarrassed. So now I'm 25 years old, and I'm having a lot of angst. Don't know what I'm doing exactly, what kind of film I want to make. And I go to a therapist in New York who specializes in that. And you have to know, 1969 through 72, New York is filled with therapies. There's scream therapy. You can go and go in a padded room with a bunch of other people, scream your head off. There's bioenergetics where you run around a room and a woman screams, screams things 
that your mother might have said, and then you go with a tennis racket and you hit the racket and you say, I hate your mother. These things were not for me. There was transcendental meditation. I did a little bit of meditation, I loved it. And then there was this guy, and he, he called it like quick therapy, in and out. And I go in and I tell him my problems. I'm not sure what I'm doing in life. I feel anxiety. Go in the group, he says. So I go in the group, there were groups, 13 of us. One guy wore a raincoat and hid all the time. Another person believed that there was candy coming out of some oil wells in Israel. They were a little stranger than me, but mostly it was neurotics. And he says to us, each of you has to go into a public space and be embarrassed. So I'm going to assign each of you a location in New York City in which you're going to faint. And when fainting, with your eyes open, you're going to see what happens. What happens to you, what people do. Mine was Grand Central Station. I go into the station, I faint. Oh boy, this is the moment. People are running over, wheelchairs helping me, checking on me. There's a, so it wasn't 911 then, but just somebody runs over with a little thing if I need air. It was nice. People were great. They, I was taken care of. I sort of learned another thing about embarrassment. A thing I had to learn because I'm going to tell you two more really embarrassing moments that proved my thesis that embarrassment could be an advantage. Here's a big one. Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, big building in New York. The CEO wants to make a series of films to help teenagers and they hire me and I'm there for lunch to discuss with the four people in the executive dining room and I'm wearing a suit and tie, appropriate, and they're serving a kind of a hamburger plate and I ask for the ketchup, I pick up the ketchup, open the bottle and I go, you know, you have to do that, right? Because the ketchup's stuck. It shoots past the plate and right onto my pants, which are below where you can see. I now have a bob blob of ketchup on my fly. At first, I don't know what to do. This is not, beyond embarrassing, this is disgusting. And what I choose to do is I pick up a glass of water and I watch their eyes and when they're talking to each other, I go like that. I pour a little bit of water down there. Then I take a napkin and I slowly try to wipe off the ketchup from my fly like I'm doing now, except it smushes around on my pants and they end up with this light red stain right around my fly. What does the man do? What I did was I got up I, with a napkin there and I said, gentlemen, I spilled ketchup on my fly and it, it really is embarrassing and it doesn't look good. Excuse me for a minute, let me go to the bathroom and then we'll continue. I'm going for about five minutes washing myself and I come back with a big wet spot there, but at least no ketchup stain. And these guys are beyond friendly to me. Whoever David Hoffman is, he isn't one of us because we wouldn't have been like that, whatever they would have done. But they were just nice. They liked me and I got, not only got the job, but the CEO said, you know, come sometime, come again sometime, David. Huh, that's a real lesson. I turned embarrassment into benefit, kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember, but in the 1970s, there was this television series in which a girl is selling Girl Scout cookies at the supermarket and every time she drops the soup cookies just as she's about to get to the potential customer, go, oh no, no, and she picks it up and the cookies are a little crunched. Oh no, she says, and the person says, I'll buy that. They're nicer to her because she dropped the cookies and people felt bad. Yes, I had several incidents in my career, young career, that were just incredible. You couldn't believe this. I got a piece of chicken stuck in my mouth when I was being interviewed for my first feature documentary film by a very famous New York critic. <coughs> Hold it. Ah, good coffee. Chicken in my mouth, stuck. I had to say to the guy, sorry, I had to get it out. I had to cough it up. It was really disgusting. In another instance, I have a temporary in. You ever have one of these things with the springs? and I chew and the spring bounces and the tooth comes out into the plate. That's another public dinner that I'm having where I'm with somebody. So what did I learn from all of this? I learned that embarrassment is wrong. To be embarrassed means somebody else isn't like you. They wouldn't have this happen. They couldn't empathize or sympathize. They wouldn't like you in some way. It's really not right. Right is most people feel empathy, sympathy, support, and the reality of you becomes more real. 
Some people judge you. Hierarchy. You know, it's like rich people. We used to be taught in the 50s, well, that person's important. That person's important. You're not important. They're important. I never bought any of that. As a 60s guy, my feeling was, you think you're important? You do a poop and I do a poop. Uh, you have a fly if you're a man, and I have a fly, and sometimes it can be open. So I did not see anyone as better or worse than me, which allowed me to ask questions of people that were naive, sometimes silly, because I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm like you, I'm just a person. I don't know a lot, I'm not an expert on anything. Part of the films that I've made that my subscribers enjoy come from a reality. The reality is David asks questions and he talks with people whether or not they're intelligent or smart or have any special anything, they're real. They're what he's like. So what are you like? So I have one more tip to give you, my last one. When I look in the eyes of a person, when I've just done something embarrassing, you can tell right away, are they sympathetic, empathetic, or are they hierarchical? Do they see, you know, looking down at me? And if they do, I know something about them. I know how they see me. In other ways, also, the way I speak, my clothing, the judgments they're making. Basically, I've learned about them. So, David Hoffman, hope I help you. Bird by my side, you take care and screw embarrassment.